In this video, I'm going to show you how to take one step closer to having the best retention on a YouTube video that you've ever seen before using B-roll. So this is B-roll that you can see right now. It's footage that goes over the top of what you're saying, helps you tell more of a story, and makes everything come to life. And it will make your YouTube viewers watch your videos for longer. And from the comments you guys leave, you can see how much impact it has. And it's the reason massive YouTubers use it in every video. Because without it, their content just wouldn't be the same. But it can be pretty daunting to make if it's your first time, or even if it's your 10. But for this video, we're going to start by making one small section of B-roll for your next video. And then over time, I want you to build on what you're going to learn from today. But for now, we're going to keep it very simple, which means you can forget lighting, forget fancy pants setups. I don't want you spending ages trying to make the perfect scene. It's only going to eat up your time. You probably don't have. And that will make the next time you try and do things just feel more daunting and too much like hard work. So to start, just find a space that's got lots of natural light coming in, but ideally not direct sunlight. What that will do is it will cause exposure issues. Do it at the start of the day and in the evening when the lights it's softest. So the first thing I want you to do is to put down your camera. Yeah, sorry. We uh we need to plan. Now if you don't plan your B-roll, I guarantee you that your shots will suck. <laughs> you'll rush them, you'll end up frustrated, and you're also gonna end up kidding yourself into thinking it's pointless and your attention won't increase. It will. Now the point of B-roll is to make the content more interesting visually, to help you tell a story and to help keep your attention flying. So go and find part of your video that you think is a really important part for your viewer, and that's where you're gonna plan the shots for, and the rest of the video is gonna show you how. Now I'd really like you to try and pick a section in the first 60 seconds of your YouTube video if possible. Now I've written a 10 second script, and we're gonna build the B-roll for this clip to use over the top of the A-roll. So here it is, here's the line. When you first pick up a camera, the first thing you should do before you turn it on to record is plug in the batteries. Now once you've decided on that, we need to think about how you can use B-roll to make this section work. So the first question you want to ask yourself is, how can I show this point in action? Now, the obvious thing here in our demo is to show someone picking up a camera and trying to film with it, right? The next question that you need to ask yourself is, how can I make that even more interesting? And there's a few ways. The way you frame the shot could help with that, but also how the scenario is acted out and the tone of the the narrative. So I'm going to show you what I mean about the tone first. Option one could be something like this. When you pick up a camera, the first thing you should do before you turn it on to record is plug in the battery versus this tone. When you pick up a camera, the first thing you should do before you turn it on to record is plug in the battery. You see that? The delivery of the narrative can actually play a big part in how the B-roll is shot too. So when you've made your decision on the tone, you want to think about how you might frame your shot next. Now there are tons of ways you can frame something. All I'm going to do is give you three really basic options to play with in your first YouTube B-roll, and you're going to see just how much you can do with them too. Starting with this, the dirty frame. So this is a dirty frame. You see that? It's almost like your viewer is kind of peeking around a corner spying on something. Now this can be a really cool way to set a scene for something. It doesn't give everything away and it kind of leaves the viewer guessing a little bit, which I think makes it more interesting. So to do this, imagine your screen is split into thirds. Keep the main focus of the video in two thirds and then the item closest to the camera blurred out in the other third. Now, a quick way to add a little extra to this is to focus on the object closest to the camera and then focus on the distance like so. So here's that clip again using the dirty frame to start it. When you pick up a camera, the first thing you should do before you turn it on to record is to plug in the battery. Now you can dirty frame pretty much anywhere. It's not the kind of thing you want to use non-stop do need to mix it up a bit which brings us on to the next thing to try out and that is the close so a close is great because it can really focus in on something important in the video but at the same time you can use it to not give too much information away so if i was talking about using the record button on this camera this close would be helpful to point that out now watch what happens when i use it as part of the scene to try and create some mystery with the dirty frame when you pick up a camera the first thing you should do before you hit record is plug in the battery. You see that your viewer kind of understands what's going on, but there's a little bit of mystery as to what is happening. And in that case, it disguised the joke too. If it's your first time, keeping the clothes simple and matter of fact is a pretty good place to start like my first example. And then we have the wide. Now a wide shot is great for giving your viewers lots of information and setting a scene and maybe revealing something. So in the previous clip, the wide was used to finally reveal the joke. But this time I'm gonna use it at the start to set things up. When you first pick up a camera, the first thing you should do before before you turn it on to record 
is plug in the battery. Can you see the difference? These pretty basic options can just do so much. It's mad, right? And it's by practicing that you'll start to understand how and when to use each of them to tell a more interesting story. Now, of course, B-roll can be anything. You don't have to act out like I did, although it's fun. Now, let me show you what happens when you remove yourself from this and use stock. So when you first pick up a camera, the first thing you should do before you turn it on to record is plug in the battery. Now stock's limited, so it's kind of hard to find the right things and it still works, but it's not quite got the same magic. You just know it's not the same person. There's a bit of a disconnect. So I would really encourage you to film your own and yes, it's gonna take longer for now, but if you want that retention to increase, these are the things that you need to do that will achieve that. So now let's look at framing a little bit further. So the rule of thirds is the simplest way to look at this, and it works like this. Now your camera's probably got an option on it to create a grid on screen like this. When it comes to your object or person, you wanna make sure that they're in one of these columns. So the left column, the center, or the right. So you also need to think about rows too. So if you're filming a person, you want it to, in most cases, keep their eyes on the line just at the top here. So their heads sticking out in the upper third. Or you might only want to, on a close, give a little bit of information away. So you could use this to show the top of an item in the lower third. You can, of course, keep things in the middle as well. So here's your homework. Yes, that's right. A dude on YouTube just gave you some homework. <laughs> I'm fun. Now I want you to pick a short section of your next video, ideally less than 60 seconds in, and use B-roll to make a point work 10 times harder for your attention. But I want you to do this. Capture three closes, three wides, and three dirty frames. Then take all of that footage over to your edit and just have a play about with using all of them in different orders. In the future, you probably won't want as many different angles and options, but before you do that, and most importantly, you need to watch this video here to see how big YouTubers use B-roll to completely dominate retention.